So we left off, we finished um, entering in this bill from Kim Robinson. So now the next scenario that happened is that we decided we actually got, we received, excuse me, um, we received our equipment that we ordered from furniture store. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and grab the journal and see how this transaction affects our company. So let's look at our um, receipt here that we received from furniture store. Okay, and assume delivery charges. So notice here, assume delivery charges, okay, are going to be split 75% of the and 25% to the shelves. So let's look at our information again. So we received our bill. Here it gives us that the terms are net 15, so they didn't give us any discounts. Um, the date that they shipped it out was on June 7th, and we received it on June 7th. Okay, so we bought one counter and we bought five display shelves. So as you can see, here it is, the total amounts. We have to pay tax on it because it's furniture, and we also had to pay um, a delivery charge. Okay, so just like what we did earlier um, for the uh, the computer and the printer, how are we going to split the tax? And of course, from right above, um, as we all know, shipping is based on how heavy the item is. So assuming in this case, I've, I'm telling you right now that the shipping cost should be distributed based on weight. As you can tell, display shelves, display shelves are not that heavy. A counter would definitely weigh a lot more. So in this case, I'm telling you that you're gonna split the um, the shipping cost to be 75% to the counter and 25% per, uh, to the actual shelves. Now, of course, um, depending who your accountant is, they'll tell you how much to distribute the shipping based on, whether you can, there are other options that you can do, you can do based on price, but usually it's based on weight. Um, I wouldn't expect you to have a scale and weigh them and make it a precise amount, but um, you know, a good observation would be that usually the, ca the counter would definitely be a lot heavier, all right? So that's how I'm telling you to split that. So let's go ahead and determine our, so our grand total that we owe is going to be for the 1770.30, all right? So now we have to distribute the tax and we also got to distribute how much shipping for each. So let's, as you can see here, we're gonna, we received our counter and we received our display shelf. So let's go check out our chart of accounts what those account numbers are. Okay, so uh, display shelves and the counter. Okay. So what is the counter? What account number is the counter? One, uh, one thirty twenty, one thirty twenty, and then we have our um, display shelves for uh, one thirty forty. All right, and again, we received a bill, so are we um, obligated to pay it now? No, we have fifteen days. We have fifteen days, so let's go ahead and enter in the foundation, and then we'll solve the rest so we have a counter 13 20 and then we have display shelves for 13 20 and then lastly we placed it we received a bill and we're not paying it now so we have 15 days to pay this bill all right. Say that again. Display shelves is 1340. 13, oh, okay, sorry, my bad. Typo. <laughs> I fat fingered that one. All right, there you go. Okay, so we know the grand total has to be 1770.30, right? So in this case, 
we know how much each one costs, right? The total for the sh the for the total for the counter is a hundred. Oh, I'm sorry, a thousand thirty-three, and we know that the full amount for the display shelves is the five hundred and ten. Okay, so from there, how do we determine the tax, or how do we split the tax? So in this case, you can go ahead and on the side of your um, journal, you can do your calculations there. Okay. So how much tax is gonna be towards the counter? We got eighty five twenty two, so add that to the yeah. mm -hmm, add that to the amount. Eleven eighteen twenty. Eleven eighteen twenty. I got twenty two, so let me I got twenty two. Okay. So eleven oh three times It's okay. All right, so that's how much there is there. Now, what about the sh display shelves? Oh, eight. Okay. So here, um, in this case, let's, okay, so in this case, we have to round up because that's seven, right? The next number is five. So if you round up, right, because um, due to the distri distribution of the, um, the pennies, right? If you just did it at seven, it only will give you 20, 29 cents. And the tax is here is an um, even number of 127 30. So you do have to round up to one of, for one of them. So in this case, you're going to round up to the uh, display shelves because it's seven, it's zero seven five, right? Where uh, the 22, let's see, did we expand that? Let's see how much that one is. Okay, 22, two. So two, two, two. So in this case, we shouldn't round the dis uh, the counter right you're more likely to round the display shelves right so that's just only dis distributing the tax what about distributing the shipping it's a hundred dollar shipping so how much are you gonna add to the counter mm -hmm. 75 for the counter mm-hmm Okay, good. So in grand total, how much is the counter going to be? Eleven ninety three twenty two. Eleven ninety three twenty two. And how much is your counter going to be? I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, shelves, yes. <laughs> yes, how much is the shelves going to be? We got 57708, so let's double confirm. Is that going to equal out our total amount that we owe? In this case, yes, I get the exact amount of the 17, 70, and 30 cents even. 
all right? By adding up the two, I also double confirm that my debits match my credits. So in this case, good, all right? Okay, so we're making purchases of fixed assets, right? As we remember, it's every single cost to get the asset ready for service, not to the store, okay? That's inventory. So that means in this case, I have no additional fees because again, a counter, it's already installed, or it's already the way it is, right? Display shelves, you just install into the wall. It's already ready for service. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and make a note here just because I have all the information I need, right? I have the person who sent me this, right? It's furniture store. I also have the invoice number. What invoice number is this? Invoice number 69. Invoice number 69, okay? Um, I have a due date, right? Net 15. All right. And that's pretty much it, okay? So, before I continue on to my ledger, I'm going to go ahead and update my purchase orders because I received my items. Okay. So you can choose, um, in this case, um, uh, I journalized it first, but what you can do is every time you receive an item, you can always check mark the purchase orders first and then proceed to the journal. Whichever one makes it better, whichever makes it easier for you. But for now, uh, I'm recognizing my journal. I wrote in my journal and now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I also validate that I did receive my counter and my shelves. And this is invoice number 69, okay? All right, so now that is done, we are gonna go ahead and now go into our ledger, okay? So let me bring back my journal real quick. Okay, so ledger first thing i have is a counter a counter is going to be a fixed asset and it's going to be under furniture there you go so i received it on the 7th of june Right? No description really necessary because you already know that you purchased the counter. Okay? Post reference, again, is your general journal number two. That's where we journalize this. And the debit is for the 11.9322. And because it's my first entry once again, therefore, my I should have a debit balance for the 11.9322. Okay. Okay. All right. If we scroll down a couple, you should be able to locate your display shelves. So here we are, display shelves. Six, seven is when we received it. In this case, notes, you could say this is five. Um, display shelves like you could do quantity all right post reference once again is general journal number two and this time we're going to debit the account for five hundred seventy seven dollars and eight cents and once again because that's my first entry here it should reflect a debit balance of $577.08. Of course, we decided to um, uh, not pay yet, so we're gonna go ahead and update our accounts payable, which is our liability. So again, we've only so far um, dived into just one aspect of liabilities, right? We've only our, um, entering information to our accounts payable. So here's where it is. Again, 
You can place any information in here. I think the most sufficient information that you can place here is invoice number 69. Okay? Because you can pull that invoice up and you're going to have all the information such as the vendor information, when it's due, how much it's due, what did you buy, etc., etc. Okay? So again here, I'm going to enter in um, post reference as general journal number two. Okay. And I increased my account by 177030, bringing me a new grand total of 3419 and 79 cents. So I'm increasing my total liabilities. Alright. Now that I completed my general ledger, now we can go ahead and fill in our subsidiary ledger. So once again, we're going to go to our um, furniture store under vendors. Okay, so right here, furniture store, all right, we're going to enter in the date and we're going to enter in what we bought from here, them. So if we bought a counter, display shelves, okay, invoice, invoice number 69. Post reference, general journal number two. What is the terms? Net 15. Net 15, all right. So what is going to be the due date? June 22nd is going to be the due date. Good. All right. Of course, we didn't make any amount, uh, prepaid amounts on there. Um, and we know that our invoice amount is going to be for the 177030. All right. No, um, no purchase returns and allowances unless for some reason we find something wrong. No discount because our terms was just a straight net 15. And uh, we didn't make any payments. So therefore, the formula, once again, is going to be your invoice amount minus any prepaid, minus any returns, minus your discounts, minus your payments. So therefore, I owe a grand total of $17.70 and 30 cents. And it should, in this case, this one should automatically picked up at the bottom. Good. That is it for that one, right? We finished all three worksheets. Okay. And that's it. We are concluded with that. All right. So then what has happened next? Same date, June 7. Um, we purchased the uh, we... But the we 10 bistro tables and two chairs. Hmm. Okay, good. We, ordered them at least. we just ordered them. Right. So, no transaction, right? Mm -hmm. However, what should we do, though? Put down our purchase order. Place it in the purchase order. So then we know what we're going to be looking forward to. All right. So I'm going to go to my purchase orders here. And I am, so June 7, okay? And I bought this once again from Furniture Store, so I guess I'm still looking at their catalog. Um, and I bought tables and chairs. Okay? 
and for what grand total amount? Six thousand five six thousand fifty five fifty. All right. All right. Good. Okay. So let's see. All right. So that, that that's it. We're done with that one. Okay. So let's go back to our journal and let's continue on. What has happened next? I'm going to go ahead and push this forward. So what has happened next? We wrote a check. Okay. So the down payment check was written for what? Ailey Brothers. Okay. On the six. What happened to that check? It was wrong amount. It was for the wrong amount. So what are we doing? We issued a revised purchase order. Okay. We revo revoided the check and issued a new check for the correct amount. Okay. So that means whoever did the account the the calculations they did not do it right, right? So we have to do a reverse and re-entry transaction. So we're going to reverse the check that was written, and then we're going to write a new check, okay? So because so when uh, whoever, the um, inventory manager, they didn't calculate what one-third of the bill was, right? Because they I don't know what happened, but the actual amount is supposed to be for eleven seventy one and 87 cents. That's truly reflecting one-third of the payment. So in this case, let's go ahead and deal with one transaction at a time. Let's deal with first things first. Before we journalize anything, let's go ahead and void that check. Okay. So in this case, pretty straightforward. When you go in here and you void a check, usually what happens is um, you would just cancel it or uh, um, call up the bank to void it. Okay. So in this case, I have fifteen oh six for the um, for for the uh, eleven forty twenty two, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in big capital letters. If you have red or whatever you want to do, you can actually stamp it with a big huge void okay All right we also have to make a revision to the purchase order so in this case of course i'm not gonna actually i don't have an actual purchase order itself but i do want to indicate that i'm going to come back here locate the haley bros transaction and i'm just going to make sure that i code this as a revised um purchase order all right we don't have purchase order form so in this case i'm just revising it and it's going to be revised for the new amount of payment obviously and um there you go we just need to record that it's been revised all right r for revision okay and now let's go ahead and practice our reverse and re-entry. So in this case, how am I going to reverse my transaction on June 6th when I wrote the check for the 1100? How do I reverse that? To put the money back into checking and credit the prepaid accounts for the 1140.22. Correct. So again, so that, that's correct. So we do checking, right? 10, 100. What is my, pre and we're going to credit my prepaid accounts because that's my original, what I originally placed it in for, right? That's the original down payment. And that's the original location where I placed it. So in this case, what is my account number for the prepaid accounts? One. Eight six zero zero. I got you. Okay, and then of course, for what amount am I reversing it for? The eleven. Correct. Eleven forty twenty two. Okay, 
And of course, I'm also going to make a description here since I have the information, right? The information is I am, um, what did I write? Adjusting uh, to correct, to correct Haley Bro's entry on June 6th. And then you can even enter information such as um, purchase order PO number set one seven zero three zero three. Okay. All right. You can even add information such as that you voided the check number uh, fifteen oh six if you'd like. Whatever information allows you to uh, know exactly what this transaction is. Okay. So now that I've done that, right, now I must go to my ledger because now I have to correct all the information, right? I'm reversing the transaction. So I'm gonna go to my assets, right? I'm gonna place that money back into my checking account. All right? And I'm gonna also indicate here that I voided, void check number 1506, right? General journal number two. So because I'm voiding it and it's going back to my account, I'm going to recredit my account for the 114022. So once I do that, it should re update my account balance back to 116129. Of course, okay. And then I'm also going to update my prepaid accounts, right? Because we are reversing our transaction. Prepaid accounts should be right after the accumulated depreciation for the truck. Okay, so here's prepaid accounts. Six, seven, right here. I can also write again, void check number um, uh, uh, 1506 um, and then you can also write uh, reverse okay so general journal number two again I'm crediting the account because I no longer have that deposit or that down payment anymore so there you go now that I'm crediting it, it and if I have my formula placed in there, it should now reflect me back down to 665417. Okay. Of course, with that being said, because I'm dealing with a vendor, I also have to make sure I update my um, my vendor as well, right? Because right now it's reflecting that I have uh, I paid them but in this case I also have to come back down here and I'm going to actually void it so in this case um, if you want to edit the information you can um, but in this case I'm just going to type in here that it's just voided Okay, I'm going to leave the amounts there because again, it's important that you keep a paper trail. And again, the check number 1506 is for the 1143 for uh, 4022. But in this case, does this affect our business at all? If we were to edit this information? No, because if we voided the check, right? Essentially, I still, I don't owe Haley Bros anything. So in this case, I don't, it doesn't really matter whether I get rid of this transaction or not. And then rule of thumb is you should definitely keep everything, especially when you have a voided check available, right? Here, this is a temp that I tried to pay, but at the end of the day, I still don't owe Haley Bros anything. So in this case, I'm going to leave it just as is, as long as I just edit that I voided this check. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the scenario here. So now we need to 
enter in the correct amount and write a brand new check because that's what um, it says for me to do. I need to write a brand new check, not write a check for the difference. So in this case, I voided my check, so I have to go ahead and write a new check for the amount of 1171.87, okay? So again, it's going to be Haley Bros for the correct amount. So again, to our purchase order for the, revi the revised version of the purchase order. So in this case, how am I going to journalize this? How am I going to journalize this? Yes, that's correct. If you'd like, you could, I'm going to go ahead and try to find it from above here. And I'm going to copy and paste it because... I want to save some extra time. Okay. There you go, prepaid accounts, checking. It's going to be Haley Bros, purchase order 30, uh, was it, um, 17303 R, okay? It's one third payment down payment check number. It's not going to be 1506, it's going to be 1507, okay? And this time for the amount of 1171.87. Okay, 11.71.87, all right? So that's my journal entry. So let's go ahead and write my check, okay? All right, so June 7. Check now is for the 11.71.87, and again, it is to Howie. Rows. Oh, not voided. I can. Uh, I would have to get rid of that. Actually, I'm just gonna type in how we. Just how we rows. So my check is written, my purchase order has been revised, my journal is complete, all right, all right. So now I'm gonna go back into my um, ledger and I'm gonna re-update this new information, okay? So how perfect, we are already in my prepaid accounts. So I can go ahead and enter the information in here um, and also making sure that I fill in other stuff as well. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and write in the same thing, um, except it is going to say per purchase P-O, right? gonna say P O three O three R one third down payment right um, general journal number two okay and again it's for the eleven seventy one eighty seven so that should bring my account balance now to seven thousand eight hundred and twenty six oh four then of course, after we do that, we're gonna climb all the way back up to the very, 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 very top. And we are going to edit our checking account. Once again, six, seven for check number 1507 for the amount of 1171.87. Seven, bringing my account balance to be now ten thousand one hundred eighty nine and forty two cents. Okay. 
Okay, everyone okay now? With everyone with me? Yes. Okay. Last but not least, we have to come back and we have to re-edit this information. Now, you have two choices. You can revise this entire amount and clean it up and just change as if this transaction has never happened. But the only issue with that is you're not keeping a very good paper trail if you decide to just eliminate this entire thing, right? So rule of thumb is you should never delete any single transaction, okay? Even if you made a mistake, all right? You're just gonna enter in a new transaction, but making sure that the previous transaction is like in, like it's obvious that you've canceled this transaction. So again, I have that void right here. So again, I'm gonna enter in everything exactly the same, except um, except I'm gonna have a little different information. Other things too is look at the date. The date are two different dates. So again, if you to, if you plan to take this exact transaction and just re you know refill in everything, then essentially you're deleting or removing the transaction. Which again, general rule of thumb, that's also code for you might be cheating or you might be uh, um, you know taking that check um, of the 1506 and pocketing it yourself. Okay, and in this case, that's not the that's not what. Um, that's not the issue, okay? So again, I hear you. I went ahead and copied and pasted everything over here. So I gotta make a few changes. But this is not voided, and it's check number fifteen oh seven. Invoice number is going to be the same, except it's gonna have an R at the end of it, right? So I need to fix this and say it's revised. So again. Looking at the difference between these transactions, can you tell the difference between them? Yes, one of them is voided, the other is a new check that you've written, and you have a new invoice because it's just a purchase order of the, the same order except it's been revised. So in this case, this gives me a perfect trail of a transaction where I've made a mistake and now I'm fixing it and revising it and sending a brand new check on a different date. So that's what's most important is that if you go ahead and eliminate that whole thing, you, you, you know, it's possibility of fraud. Okay. So again, this happened again on general journal number two, same information is going to apply except, you know, this time it's 171.87. And of course you made a payment because you paid a check, um, uh, 115, uh, 1507, so 1171.87 to bring you to zero, okay? So you should be at zero, all right? And it still says at the back, at the end of the day, it's still zero, okay? So again, this transaction didn't really affect much but however, it shows a perfect depiction of um, your, you know, what happened here. You reversed the entry, you voided the check, and that you've wrote, written another check. Okay. All right. So good. So we got to take a look at looking at a reverse and re-entry problem. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so here we're going to, we received another um, bill. And who did we receive this from? Furniture store. We received another invoice from, a, or another bill, excuse me, from furniture store. So as you can see, what is this one for? This is for the desk set, all right? We have the invoice number right there, 71. We have the due date, um, net, 15, net 15. And then of course, we have the information down below. We got charge tax and we also got charge delivery charge. In this case, we only have one item. So everything is already calculated for us. All right. So what is the amount total due uh, for this? So again, I think because my window's a little. 
So what is the amount that is due on this bill? 65837. 65837 again. It is it is everything to get the asset ready for service because this is in uh this is considered furniture. A desk set is pretty straightforward, right? It doesn't take a, a lot of uh, labor to put together if it requires assembly. Or in this case, it might be a solid desk that's already ready to go. So in this case, our total amount is going to be for the six um, fifty-eight thirty-seven. So again, what is going to be my journal? I received a bill, so therefore, am I paying it now? No. Okay. So here you go. So what did I buy? Desk set. You bought a desk set. So let's go to my chart of accounts. What account number is the desk set? Desk set. One thirty thirty. Okay. So desk set. is 1330 okay and then of course accounts payable because we're not paying it now so that should be account 2000 and for what amount am i making and do i owe Six five eight thirty seven. Good. Six five eight thirty seven. All right. And of course, we have the information that we need. Right. We know that this is from our furniture store. Okay. We know that the invoice number is number seventy one, and we know what the terms are. Right. We know that we ha this bill is due net fifteen. Okay. Right. Before we can move on to the next page or the next uh, workbook, let's go ahead and check off that we received our order. So here we received our desk, right? And the invoice is number 71. Okay. Let me go back to my journal. Here we are. All right, and we reach the end of um, journal number two. So let's go ahead and place this information in our ledger. So again, an asset is going to be the desk set. So it's going to be under furniture. Okay, so I got the counter, here you go, desk set, all right, on June 7, you don't need to fill anything in here because it's pretty straightforward, post references, general journal number two, and we increased our assets by 600, I'm sorry, 500, no, I was right, 658. Um, 37 okay and because again it's this it's the beginning of the table therefore your beginning balance in your account or the normal balance is going to be a debit balance of the six hundred and fifty eight dollars and thirty seven cents okay then of course we owe this so we're gonna update our liabilities Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert the date, and we know for a fact this is from invoice number 71. That should give us enough information. All right, so here you go general journal number two. Okay, and we owe more money. We owe an additional six hundred fifty-eight thirty-seven. So that should increase my um, accounts payable to now four thousand six hundred fifty-eight 
78 and 16 cents. Okay, so we're owing a lot of money and we're spending a lot of money. All right. And now that we finish our general ledger, we can now move on to our subsidiary ledger because we were dealing with furniture store. So again, furniture store should be right above Haley. Okay. June 7th, once again, we have received our desk set. Okay. Invoice number 71, general journal again, number two. We reached the end of it. The terms is net 15. So therefore, what is going to be the due date for this? Okay. 22nd. 22nd, yes, 722. Same thing goes on here. What is my billing amount? Six. 5837 of course I didn't make any payments to it so that means it should reflect that the my total account at uh, my accounts payable for that particular um, invoice is going to be for the 658 and notice this let's look at the bottom it's now calculated my grand total that I owe this vendor I owe this vendor 24 28 67 okay including both pending uh, bills all right okay now we that we completed all of those we can now continue on forward so what happened next to start the water and last figures for these purposes and the utilities. Okay. Any transaction has happened here? No. No. All I did was start the water. I didn't get a bill. I didn't get anything. So then what is now the next thing that we have to do? We now have to move on to the next step, right? We already accomplished the first four steps of the accounting cycle, right? We The third one is to journalize. The fourth one is to post it to the ledger. So now we have our trial balance to do, okay? So if you haven't had it already, go ahead and pull up your financial forms and we're gonna pull up trial balance number one, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. It's gonna take. It's gonna look just like this, where that you have your list of all your accounts, and you're gonna determine whether they have a debit or a credit balance. Now, the most important thing that you need to have in order to create your balance sheet is your general ledger. So everything else that you have, save it and put it away because we are completing this uh, week's. Uh, we're done with this week, right? We're done with the seventh. That's all that we're um, going to be journalizing. All we need here is just the general ledger, okay? So how we fill in or conduct our trial balance is we're literally going to list every single account with their respective account balances. Now, of course, we have a million accounts in here. So what I'm only gonna obligate you to do is only enter in the information that actually have account balances. Everything else that has zero balances, don't even care about them, right? And in this case, I want you to list every account. So regardless if they're if they belong to um, a um, if they are a main account or not. So for example, I'm going to start from the very very beginning because usually the trial balance is going to start from every account in for every account from starting from um, your first account all the way to the very last account. Okay, so in this case, my first account is going to be 10, uh, 10 100 once again, or in this case, I have um, 10. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll up all the way. So uh, my bank account is uh, is 10,000, right? 
I don't need to add this one because I don't have an account balance for it. All right. When, but do not ignore this part though because eventually what I'm going to do is once we go through our whole entire thing, right? Of course, you don't want your, your uh, financial worksheets to be extremely long because if you're going to list out every single account that exists in the books, then your, uh, you know, your financial statements are going to look very, very long and very, very tedious and you're not going to be able to find your information right there. What I want you to do is I want you to kind of break down your, um, uh, not to break it down, but uh, for when we do the financial statements, that's where I'm going to ask you to enter in everything as, as if you are entering it using the main account. So in this case, like I mentioned before, my main account is the bank account, right? Everything underneath the bank account is going to include my checking account, my petty cash account, and also the cash in the register account okay all three of those are going to be consisting under my bank because it's money that i have right a petty cash fund is still my money uh, the money in the cash register is still my money or in this case if i'm the owner of the company right but so now that we have that all that information right i'm only asking you for the trial balance all we're making sure is every single account balance or every single account with the respective account balance that's what i'm looking for so in this case my bank has zero so i'm not going to add it in here all right but that but like i said uh we will be using main accounts further on when we um, dive into doing our um unadjusted trial balance okay that'll be the first time we will see um, us using the actual um, bank account but for now we're just doing a simple weekly trial balance okay so here we are if you go open up your uh, financial statements once again at the very down below make sure you are in the correct tab for TB1 all right it should say at the top of the window that you're doing a trial balance at the end of June 7th Okay, so we're, this is us taking our safety measure precautions to ensure that our accounts balance at the end of the given week because that way we're able to determine whether we made a mistake in our accounts or not. All right, if we can ensure that our debits match our credits and once they do, we are good to go. But if you find a discrepancy, you're gonna to have to go through all your transactions and you're gonna to have to figure out where you went wrong, okay? So then again, let's start from the very, very first and this is going to be doing the account balance. You need to complete your general ledger first in order for you to do your trial balance. So that's why everything is a sequence and everything builds upon one another, okay? So first things first is I don't have anything in my bank account. So what's my next account I have? Checking, good. So I'm gonna for reformat this real quick. Make sure I left align it. Okay, so first thing I have is checking, okay? Checking, right? What is my current balance in my checking account? What is my ending balance? Huh? 10,189.42. Correct. So we're looking at, at the end of my last transaction, how much money do I actually have in the bank right now? I've, I've, I started out with 21,000, right? I, I gained money, I spent money, gained money, spent money, and now at the end of the seventh, I have, should have a total of $10,000 and it's on the debit side, right? I haven't gone, I haven't spent all my money yet. So I'm still in the positive side, which is the debit side. So in this case, I, ha I should have 10,000, um, $189.42 in my bank account, okay? 
I haven't used my petty cash fund yet, so I should have no balance there. I haven't even and I haven't even put money in my cash in my register yet, so I can go ahead and ignore those. Of course, same thing here, accounts receivable. I haven't even started my business yet, so or I haven't even set, have sales yet, so I can ignore that. All right. And of course, I don't have an allowance for Delph accounts. Other things here, business supplies. I haven't bought any business supplies yet, so I can go ahead and skip forward to all of these accounts, right? Did I buy any office supplies yet? No, not yet. So there's no account balance in there either, all right? And I haven't even made purchases of inventory yet, okay? So next week, all right, um, we're gonna take a look at how um, we're gonna start using our inventory worksheet, all right? So I can skip all of my inventory items that are broken down here. And now our first account that actually has a balance is going to be our furniture. However, what is our current balance in our furniture account? Zero. Zero. So do we need to put it in here? No. No. So in this case, we have something here, but we don't have anything in it. Okay. What about our bistro tables and chairs? Nothing in there. Okay, and of course, accumulated depreciation. We're not. We're, oh, that's further along. So now the next thing is, did we have a counter? Yes, we did. Right, and we have an account balance. So there you go, counter. It is a debit balance for. Eleven ninety three twenty two. Okay. Of course, we haven't dealt with depreciation yet. So the next one is, did we have a desk set? Yes, we did. Desk set for a debit of six fifty eight thirty seven. Okay. All right, we didn't do accumulated appreciation yet. And then do we have display shelves? Yes, we do. Display shelves, okay? And how much is the display shelves? Five, seven, seven, oh, eight. Good. No depreciation there. Um, and then the next one is going to be office equipment. So, office equipment, what did we buy? Okay. We bought, did we buy a computer? Computer. Yes, we bought a computer. Okay, for how much? 18, 34, 84. Okay. Same thing down here. Did we buy a printer? Yes, we did. For a total of three seventy-eight eighty-seven. Okay. No depreciation here. And lastly, did we buy a cash register? Yes, we did. For a total of six forty-nine forty-nine. All right. And then, of course, no depreciation on that. So, did we buy any equipment? Okay, let's take a look. Did we buy a coffee brewer? Yes, we did. That was the first thing we acquired when we bought the business. So, yes, we do have our coffee brewer number one. But in this case, it's just the account name is just coffee brewer. Okay, and it's worth $1,900. Or that's what we bought it for, okay? All right, no depreciation on that. Did we buy a coffee grinder? No, we sent a purchase order for it, but did we actually receive it? No, we didn't buy, we, we didn't acquire it yet. We don't, it's still pending, right? Our payments through, they haven't even shipped the item to us. So in this, in this round, we do not have our coffee grinder. So no depreciation there. What about vehicles? Did I buy a car yet? 
No. Okay, so we can ignore all of that. Okay, so now the next one is going to be prepaid accounts. Okay, do we have an account balance in prepaid accounts? Yes. Yes, we do prepaid accounts. For what amount? Seven thousand eight hundred twenty-six oh four. Yes, yeah, seven thousand uh, eight twenty six oh four. Okay, make sure you type it in. Now, if you are very familiar with Excel, yes, you can sell reference from two different workbooks. However, the only problem is you need to make sure that you keep the two workbooks in the same exact folder and never move it. Never make any changes to the file itself, no file name change, anything, because you can corrupt the link and it will not recognize it. So in this case, yes, I can do that. But again, what if this number changes? Then everything else gets messed up. So you want to be also careful for that as well. All right. So there you go. Prepaid amounts for the seven, two, Okay, and then now we have deposits. Do we have an account balance for the deposits? Yeah. Yes, and what is it for? 1700. 1700. All right. What about Goodwill? Yes, we do. How much? For 2100 Good. All right. And then what about our miscellaneous suspense? Do we have anything in there? It's balance is zero. The balance is zero. So in this case, you're, you, you don't have to put it in there unless you want to. But in this case, you don't want to clutter your trial balance. Just eliminate whatever you can. All right. Liabilities. Okay, so now we're moving on to liabilities. The only liability that we all only got to take a look at is just the accounts payable, right? We haven't received our credit card yet. We haven't you know, conducted sales tax yet. We haven't done payroll yet. So we don't owe anything except to accounts payable. So in accounts payable, what is my current balance? What is my current balance in my accounts payable? Yes, and good, Irina, that's correct. You want to make sure that you deb you credit this on the correct side, right? So the 407816 on the credit side. Good. All right. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to equity. All right, so equity, we only had one account in here, right? We haven't had any ca ca capital contributions, nor did we take anything out from the company. And of course, we'll talk about income summary very last, okay? So the only account I have here is just my owner's withdrawal. And right now, how much is my owner's withdrawal outstanding for? I mean, sorry, owner's equity. Jeez. Owner's equity. How? 30,000 on the credit side, okay? Right now it's worth 30,000 and it's still worth 30,000, okay? We have not encountered any revenues yet. We didn't make our, we didn't even open up our um, sales yet. So we have nothing there. And then we can skip cost of goods sold because it's directly correlated to your sales, okay? So nothing there. So we can go ahead and move along to expenses. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Did we encounter any advertising expense? No. What about bank fees? Bank, no, not yet. Okay, that's till the very end when we reconcile our bank. What about business expense? 
yes we do have a business expense and it is on the debit side for one thousand dollars okay. did we encounter any purchase expense not yet what about insurance expense Yes, insurance expense for one ninety-five eighty-three. Okay. Okay. What about labor expense? Okay, so we're gonna talk about we're gonna be um, getting having a subcontract labor and a temporary worker. All right, we haven't done that yet, so we have nothing in our labor expense. But we do have a license and permit expense. That was the first thing that we uh, journalized, right? So here you go, license. Four, three, seventy-five. All right, did we have a loss on disposal of asset? Loss on disposal of asset. Yes, for two thousand dollars. Okay. Did we encounter any office supplies expense? No. We didn't buy office supplies, so we don't have anything too expense. So no. Payroll. We don't. We didn't even employ anybody yet, so we haven't done any of that. So I'm gonna skip a couple of those because those are the sub accounts. All right. Other things is purchase expense. We haven't dealt with inventory yet, but we will. Okay, so I can ignore my contra accounts, right? My purchase returns and allowance and my purchase discounts. I can skip those. And lastly, did we have rent expense? Yes, yes. yes we did. Four fifteen. All right, and I'm just gonna go through the last couple ones here. Um, okay, so do we should we have travel expense? Obviously not. Utilities expense, including your telephone and everything. Not. Um, do we have bad debt expense? That doesn't happen until the end. Depreciate doesn't happen in the end. And amortization expense. All of those accounts don't happen until the very end. So here, if it isn't automatically already in there, um, in your totals at the very bottom, it's a pretty simple one. You're just gonna add up your totals, right? The, our main goal here is we're determining if our total debits match our total credit. So formula here is equal sum, and you're gonna highlight all the way from the top and make it all the way down to the bottom, okay? And, um, you press enter, okay? So for me, I have a total of 34,078 34, and 16 total debits, all right? And I have the exact matching total credits. And then I can also enter in a formula here just to ensure that they're zero, right? By saying um, this minus this should be zero and it does reflect as zero. So in this case, I did my entire accounting correctly. No mistakes, my debits are in the right place, my credits are in the right place, I balanced in this. And that's how you complete the trial balance, okay? Anybody get a different number? Okay, so. So your total should be 34, 78, 16, right? Okay. All right, any questions so far? That's how you complete the trial balance. You're gonna take your ledger because it has all their associated respective balances, list out all the accounts and determine their account balances, which is are they have a debit balance or a credit balance, list them out and total them up. So that's how you complete step number five the trial balance any questions i hear lots of heavy breathing guys 
All right, yes, it's a lot of information.